Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we are going to cover the pros and cons of writing rappers. Sounds, sounds, sounds awesome. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. It's Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark with Joe out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and today we're going to cover the pros and cons of writing rappers. Yeah, I think this is... Uh, for those of you who don't actually know what a rapper is, and we're not talking about Ice T or somebody, you'll find... Uh, um, it, it, and I mean, even technically, Auto Hockey is kind of a rapper for, for a lot of things in Windows, correct, Jackie? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably a good way of putting it. It's um, a programming language that's made more accessible. It's It's written in another language and is by many accepted as a scripting language. But yeah, it's kind of a wrapper for a lot of Windows functionality where you can go deeper into uh, the C++ that is actually what uh, our hard key is written in. And you can probably go even deeper and find out what C++ is written in and so on and so forth. You know, actually that alone, Jackie, is a really good point of for those who don't want, want to say, well, we shouldn't do this at all, hey, the vast majority of the stuff we work in is technically, it's not machine language, right? It's it's not uh, digital and, and machine run where it's just right down to the, the super, super fast. Uh, and, and that's, a, which is one of our pros and cons we talk about in this, uh, is the balancing the amount of time it takes for a human to do it, as well as the machine to actually, you know, effectively do it. Uh, but let's go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and get into the first pro, and then we'll just start plugging along. Yeah, I'll say uh, one of the pros is it can give access to people that would not have been able to use it otherwise. <clears throat> I, f I find that to be actually a spot-on pro because, again, with AutoHotKey as the example we just had, um, at least a lot of the people who come in there are code newbies or whatever uh, term you want to use. They haven't done much with coding before. The language has a pretty good um, uh, track record of being pretty easy to pick up. Maybe it's not the easiest, but it's it's fair. And uh, in this case, that's probably what many people uh, use wrappers for, is to make stuff more accessible. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I kind of think of it as a function, you know, it's um, you're breaking down what the user, you know, that need, is going to use it is going to need to add to, you know, some simpler than what's actually there, right? Now, in the case of AutoHotKey with using compared to C Sharp and what all, you know, we're actually changing languages, but even inside of your language, you can write a wrapper for something, right, as well. And mm -hmm. wholeheartedly agree. Well, hey, let's, it's kind of interesting because you said that how you'd view auto hotkey as, you know, somewhat easy to learn. And autonomy too, that actually is an interesting dynamic that changes depending on the expertise of the person that's trying to learn it. Because if you're, let's say you're a C-sharp programmer, a lot of them really don't like auto hotkey, right? Because it breaks a lot of the stuff that they would normally think of in a certain way, right? Yes. But if you're a total noob, um, it, to me, it is by far the easiest to step into and, and you know, so many things that are taken care of for you, uh, which is kind of the point of a wrapper, right? Like, I, I don't have to focus on all this other crap. I can just do this, right? So, yeah, and I'm one of those people, you wouldn't see me here at all if it was, I, I could almost guarantee you, if if auto hockey didn't exist, I wouldn't be doing any sort of stuff in programming because I hated that other crap. Um, I didn't want to take the time, and I still don't, right? So, it's, uh, it's great to have simple ways to do stuff. So it, it levels up, lets people have a taste, you know, without having to go crazy on being a uh, high level of uh, expertise. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the second one, which is kind of what I alluded to earlier too, is that speed um, of being able to write code instead of taking, you know, days or weeks or whatever, it can take hours or minutes or sometimes under a minute, depending on what you're doing, right? Something could be so simple. That by having a good wrapper, you can you don't have to study the ins and outs of things. You can borrow it right away and use it very quickly without very little understanding of what's. I actually did one the other day with the 
what was it? The base 64 encoding stuff. I was recording a video on it and uh, I'm like, I don't understand the vast majority of what's going. I was taking a picture and shoving it into the base 64 and then bring it back out. And I understand the concepts, but to understand the code, whoo, you know, it, it, it was going to, would take me a long time, but I don't need to, right? That, that's a beauty of it. Yeah, I, I'd say I, I'm not sure if GDI Plus, the library that, that comes or exists in the horror community, is a wrapper per se, but at least it does wrap quite a few of the more extensive uh, knowledge parts you need to know to use GDI Plus uh, functions in, from Windows where you actually have someone who's gone through all of the functionality and made sure that the Dell calls, which is probably a wrapped function by AutoHotKey in the first place, and then it's wrapped in an AutoHotKey function that then takes care of you passing the parameters in the correct needed format so that you don't need to know it because the wrapper takes care of it. So, yeah, it, it makes that part of... Uh, something very um, deep and of great use, much more accessible. And it would speed up the actual programming of stuff with all of these graphics. Uh, whereas if you actually needed to program all of that code to get that functionality when it takes care of all of the matrix inputs when you actually want stuff to add, automate, animate in a specific way and stuff like that. So yeah, speed can really be a big part of doing that. Yeah, and uh, and I th let me jump into the next one here, was but because it's similar, but it can greatly simplify what is required, you know, to know. And and that's where I think also it touches on what we just discussed. But going back, reverting back to just the example of a function, actually the the DLL, um, sorry, not DLL, the base sixty four encoding thing, because I was trying to find a way to grab the base sixty four encoded version, um, and from memory without creating a file. Um, display it. And I found an example. Um, I actually solved that using the GDI library as one, but um, I didn't solve it. I'm sorry. Someone solved it and I found it. But um, I, the first one I found, I think was by scan and he was showing how you can take it and, and then he used like the file object to save it as, um, you know, to create the file and then to display the file. What was interesting was the very first sentence of it I found that wasn't included in the function. You know, that was a part you still had to do. That wasn't in. And it's one of those, to me, interesting balancing acts of how much do you leave, you know, put in your function, you know, and that's where it just, it depends. Or it depends how much flexibility you want to allow. And that's why I think we'll get into some of the cons, right, of when you do this stuff. The more simple, quote, unquote, simple you make it and streamline what people need to do, Generally speaking, the more restrictive it is also with what they can do with it. Does that sound true? Yeah, I, I'd say, yeah, it does sound true because uh, as most people know, if you put all of the things you want to do with Excel Calm into a great big uh, library or a wrapper with lots of functions that simplify some of the stuff you need to do um, or need to type every time you want to do a thing instead of having to type three lines to do a specific Excel thing. You've now wrapped that functionality into a, a function you have made and it simplifies it. But if you then at some point find out that, oh, I don't only want to be able to tell it the color index in the cell. I actually also need to tell it the pattern or the saturation, whatever it might be. Then your, your, your wrapper will limit you, but it has simplified what you needed to do in the first place. But yeah. Yeah, which why don't you go ahead and since you're on that thread uh talk about the first con we have <laughs> yeah I, I can go straight into that because it probably won't have all of the functionality you would have had if you had used the direct approach if you hadn't wrapped the functionality in the first place to simplify to speed up to give access to 
then you would probably have access to more or more powerful or um, yeah in 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 essence by wrapping it you're probably losing out on a bit of functionality yeah and i i don't i think that's i want to say indisputable um maybe that's not quite entirely true but for the most part and again it doesn't have to be in any particular example because even just stuff with using auto hockey. Now, Maestrith has gone on to using C Sharp, and he's like, oh, my God, it's so much easier in so many ways. But he's very advanced, right? And, and he's got a lot more code now, but a lot more flexibility in doing what he's wanting to do. And so it's one of those things. Yeah, auto hockey GUIs are, you know, very – compared to, it, I think, most other languages, they're very simple in what you need to use. But you're limited, you know, in some of the functionality of what you can do. Yeah, because the GUI uh, functions in AutoHotKey is a wrapped uh, thing that where where uh, C++ the code behind AutoHotKey is taking care of all the uh, hard parts and lets you just pass uh, a few options and the Fraser will then take care of uh, making that actual happen. So so yeah, in in some cases. Wrapping stuff will also remove uh, functionality, but again, we have the next con here, which is it can also limit people from growing their knowledge. And, and that's probably right, because if you had to learn quite a lot more to be able to present stuff in a graphical user interface, um, you would be able to much more easily manipulate the interface that you showed your end user. Now you have very easy access to displaying it, but within a very tight frame of functionality. So you're limited to the color of the thing, you're limited to the size of the borders, you're, you're limited to these three standard Windows buttons or whatever it might be, just because those are wrapped to removed from your access just because you very rarely need to actually do anything with them. Well, and I, I go on. I didn't really realize it before we started this uh, podcast, but I can really relate to this topic in general. In, in a lot of ways, it's it's the whole thing between you and I, right, in, in the differences between us, right? And it's not that one's better than the other. You go diving deep into stuff, and you, when you get a new function, you see how it works, and often you end up even rewriting it or borrowing pieces from it and doing stuff in a different way. And and I'm like, screw it, you know. I I see a function, I'm like, I'm just going to use it. I don't even look inside, honestly, right? I just borrow it and use it, and I'm on doing my work, you know. And it, it's again, there's no right and wrong answer. It depends on what your needs are and what your goals are, right? It's now. Having said that, it's where you over the years have become a much better programmer than I am, which is perfectly fine, right? It's I've spent other time doing other things. Um, it just depends what your goals are, right? Um, and the great thing is, generally speaking, we get to decide, you know, I mean, that's the whole point, right? There is no right and wrong answer. It's do you want to keep, do you, like, I, I, and I, I think I've heard you say this too. I don't want to be a programmer, right? I honestly don't, I don't enjoy programming itself other than, like it's like a Sudoku kind of a challenge kind of thing to get it to work. Sometimes I like the challenge, but the actual sitting at the computer, just coding and not talking to people and stuff. That's, that's not fun to me. No, I, I had a, a good amount of time in my uh, coding career, whatever you call that in, in the amount of time that I've been able to program in a few languages and have been able to read code in other languages as well. At some point, I was like, oh, I would love to work in programming because I loved all of the challenges, all of the people I could help, all of the things I saw come into idea stage and end up being something that worked and stuff like that. But then at some point, I, I visited firms that did programming, that made websites, that made server stuff, that made all this. And I was seeing these people they probably still loved it, but they had these very narrow parts that they all of them were working on. Okay, he has that part that he needs to get working and he would code on it for days and uh, it needed to go into uh, the live version and be tested and stuff. And, and someone over here had written something that made his not work. And like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm not sure 
that's what I really want to do. I was pretty happy with the way my career had taken. So in, in that as, aspect of it, I still love that I'm able to program, but I probably don't want to be that as a career. Um, and then the last one, which we discussed earlier, right? And it's, again, it's, it's, uh, it's with anything. Uh, you, you can take it to any level you want, whether it's programming languages or using functions or, you know, there's always a way to optimize your code, especially if you take more time. And part of it is spending more time developing the code gets it closer to machine learning. And therefore, the machine doesn't need to interpret in, you know, I'm not going to say make inferences because I don't think it's doing that, but use logic to define what they're doing, right, to, to break down and understand it because it's closer to the way it, it quote, unquote, thinks. And, uh, and that's just the way it is, right, is the, the more we... Uh, we have approaches that make it like, let's say even using the GUI, right? We, you and I, we've talked about that as well, right? Compared to writing syntax, doing something with the GUI takes more time when you're writing code compared to just writing the code, right? Like if I'm using a GUI to, to, to drive that program, uh, but it's, it's okay. It just it gets back to how much time would it take, you know, uh, for a programmer to actually do that versus having a computer run it. And maybe it just doesn't, it's not optimized and, uh, it takes it a uh, you know twenty percent more time, but if it's not running millions of times, who, who cares in today's day and age? Yeah, because uh, this con of of it slowing down per performance in general is something that we've heard m many times over. Uh, Out of hotkey is slow, or this is not the best way of doing it. And I've seen uh, programmers from other languages come into our hotkey community. They have provided great insights, and, and at times they've also been like, "Yeah, you're doing it wrong. Why ain't you just doing it straight up with the the, the GDI functions instead of the GDI plus functions? Because those are much faster and stuff like that." Yeah, that's right. It, it a wrapper or a wrapper functions or overheat in general with uh, one language or one code or one function or whatever might slow down performance, but it. It depends on what you're doing with it. Are you writing an entire graphic engine? Fair enough. You need to really <laughs> make sure you're not slowing stuff down unnecessarily. But are you making stuff happen in uh, Excel for yourself? It probably doesn't matter if the computer is using 2% more processing power for those three seconds that that's happening so so yeah yeah generally speaking it's a trade-off you know of developer time and this isn't the only one but the major one is the developer's time versus the end time it's going to be running on the computer uh, but there's other ones of like in order for me to be able to program at a better level i'm going to have to invest months probably of learning how to program and then even when you go to uh, edit later to optimize the code or you know, fix something, it's going to take more time to, to do that. Uh, and, and it's again, it's a balancing act, right? But it, yeah. it's, that's why it's pros and cons. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if anyone, if you have anything we didn't mention here, uh, please chime in and tell us what you think. We'd love to hear. Yeah, we, we're sure there are plenty more uh, pros and cons of wrappers, but yeah, these were just six that we had thought up here and, and wanted to share. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Bye. Three, two, one. So I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs>